What's going on, guys? It's your boy Terabai Reacts here, and I'm back with another Game of Thrones theory, lore, whatever reaction. Again, I don't know why I'm acting like this, but anyways, um, love the fact that you guys have a tremendous response on that last channel update that I did. Um, I'm glad. I'm happy that you guys um go out there and, and and just um interact with my videos as i've said in, in in that channel update it's very important that you guys interact with the videos because um um it makes you more visible on youtube more people will come to the channel more people will subscribe and if i'm not getting that interaction on the other videos not and, I, and i've said this before i'm saying it again I will never stop reacting to the stuff that you guys are suggesting. It's just that if it's not doing well on the channel, it's not going to be priority. If everything does well, then everything becomes priority, guys. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, I will do it, but it's going to be sporadic because I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, they can wait a little bit longer because that's how I think. Because if I have something else to do, like, how I've said, I said Ippo is doing very well on the channel right now. And also the Game of Thrones stuff is doing very well on the channel. So for those, I'm always going to try to get those done. And also they're easier to make because I don't have no problems uploading them to YouTube. The other stuff, it's a mission because I got to upload to YouTube and I have to upload to the Google Drive. So everything else is a mission. Ippo and Game of Thrones stuff don't give me no problem to upload to YouTube so it's easier for me to get it done and it's only two things that really really does well on the channel code Gias is get I mean code Gias you not get it wrong again is doing very well also but you guys Game of Thrones let's go is one of my favorite characters in Game of Thrones right here as you guys know Ober Martell we are about to react to one of his videos um saying before the books so this is some history stuff um so this is from before the book somebody suggested this video to me because i guess they saw me um talking about him that he's one of my favorite characters so they sent this video to me so i'm gonna do it it's it's only like about 13 minutes so i'm always interested in the history of these characters um why because a lot of them has legendary history in 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 the game of thrones verse legendary history i mean sir barristan all of them just some of my favorite characters that i'm like what why you know what i'm saying so let's jump into this let's see where it takes us let's go Ober martel before the books all right let's do it why am i still here <laughs> Oberyn and Miros Martell stole our hearts in the book and show only to die really quickly. But before he died, he had 40 plus years behind him where he was a respected warrior with a fearsome reputation, a proud father, and an amazing man. This video let's talk about the Red Viper. Oh, that was his name? The By the Red time Viper? we see Oberyn, he is around 42 years old with a lined face, thin eyebrows, black viper eyes, a sharp nose, and lustrous black hair with a little silver that recedes from his brow into a widow's peak. But before we knew him, he had an interesting life. Oberyn was born into House Martell, one of the great houses of the Seven Kingdoms and the rulers of Dorne. He was the third-born child to the Princess of Dorne, who ruled the region, and her consort. His brother Dorne came before him by ten years, and his sister Ilya only by one. Given the amount of miscarriages and difficulties with pregnancies in general his mother had, Dorne had not expected his brother or sister to live. Though Oberyn and Ilya were inseparable, likely due to being so close in age, Doran and Oberyn also had much love for each other, but some pretty stark differences. While his older brother was cautious, reasoned, subtle, deliberate, and lazy to a degree, Oberyn was always considered half-mad, deadly, unpredictable, and dangerous. 
We don't know much of Oberyn's early years, but we do know Doran, being a decade older, remembers watching them play in the Water Gardens. Later, Oberyn was fostered at Sandstone. At around 14 years old, Oberyn, along with his sister, mother, and her consort, went to castles looking for potential marriage candidates for his sister. Which, of course, Oberyn spent the time mocking her suitors relentlessly, as all good brothers do. The <laughs> names he gave them were hilariously awful. Squire Squish Lips, Little Lord Lazy Eye, and The Whale That Walks. The only suitor Oberyn considered halfway presentable was Baylor Hightower, a pretty young man who his sister quickly fell half in love with. Then the poor boy had the misfortune of farting in their presence. Oberyn quickly named him Baylor Breakwind, and soon after, <laughs> Ilya could not look at him without laughing. So that was the end of that potential match. Later in life, Oberyn would agree that his name calling was a bit inappropriate, and he was a monstrous young fellow who should have had his vile tongue sliced out. However, Oberyn believes that there was something else going on, that these ill-looking suitors were given to them on purpose, so that after seeing all the pimply awful ones, they would be starving for the feast. The main course being Casterly Rock, where Tywin's twins lived. After visiting Starfall, the Arbor, Old Town, the Shield Islands, and Crackhall, they at last visited Casterly Rock, where Tywin Lannister, who was currently the Hand of King Aerys II, ruled as Lord. Oberyn's mother and Tywin's wife, Lady Joanna Lannister, were good friends. They had been at court together as girls, companions to Princess Rella, and there was hopes of a match between the children to bring the families closer. Oberyn believed that his mother meant to match him with Cersei and or Ilya with Jaime. Their timing was horrible, however. Lady Joanna had just given birth to Tyrion and died in childbirth. She left behind an infant and her eight or nine-year-old twins, Jaime and Cersei. There were talks of maybe not going to the Westerlands after they heard the news while in Old Town, but Oberyn's mother sailed on. Upon arriving at Casterly Rock, Tywin ignored the family the entire time they were there after he commanded for his brother, Kevin Lannister, to entertain them. Oberyn was given a cell that was dark and windowless, much like a dungeon, but he had a feather bed and mirish carpets. Prince Oberyn recalls that the Westerland skies were too gray, the women too chaste, the food too bland, and the wines too sweet. But he considered Tyrion the most disappointing of all. They had been in Old Town when he was born, and the whole city had talked about the monster that had been born to the king's hand. Rumors had swirled that he had a stiff, curly tail like a swine's, a monstrous huge head that was half again the size of his body, that he had thick black hair and a beard and evil eye teeth so long he couldn't close his mouth, lion claws, and lastly, both a vagina and a penis. Oberyn and Ilya finally got a peek at this monstrous baby when Cersei promised to show them what Tyrion looked like. The day before they were to sail proved the best time, and both Jamie and Cersei took Ilya and Oberyn to the nursery. The wet nurse tried to send them off, but Cersei, with her usual charm, threatened the woman. After that, <laughs> Cersei undid Tyrion's clothes to give them a look. But while Tyrion's head was larger than most, there was no tail, no beard, no teeth or claws, and nothing between his legs but a tiny pink cock. Though he did have some black fuzz on his scalp and one evil eye. The letdown for Oberyn was immediate. After all the whispers, Tywin's baby was simply a hideous red infant with stunted legs. The baby was so lacking the features of a monster that his sister Ilya, instead of gasping or screaming in horror, made the noise that young girls make at the sight of infants. Oberyn, very let down, commented that Tyrion seemed like a poor sort of monster. But Cersei quickly replied that the baby had killed her mother, and she began to twist his cock so hard that Oberyn thought she would pull it off. Luckily, Jaime stopped her, and Cersei told them that it didn't matter, as the baby would likely die soon. Years later, Oberyn's mother would tell him on her deathbed about the meeting with Tywin at Casterly Rock. After Oberyn's mother waited as long as was decent, she talked about the marriages. Lord Tywin refused, saying his daughter Cersei was meant for Rhaegar. When she asked about Jaime, Tywin offered Tyrion instead. This offer she took for an outrage, so they left without any marriage arrangements. Moving forward, now let's talk about how he earned the nickname, the Red Viper. Oberyn had a taste for women. 
At 16, his eyes fell upon Lord Ironwood's paramour. Old Lord Ironwood was a huge man with a short temper and a fierce reputation. Due to this transgression, a duel was demanded, but as Oberyn was young and of high birth, it was only to first blood instead of to the death. Well, both men dueled, took cuts, and decided their honor had been satisfied. However, while Oberyn's wounds healed and he made a full recovery, for some reason, Lord Ironwood's wounds Outside those walls, it's perdition. Ruthless factions festered and soon killed him. Now, the man was old, but that didn't stop men from whispering that Oberyn had poisoned his sword, ensuring the man would die if cut. Afterwards, friend and foe would call him the Red Viper. And fun fact, Oberyn actually milked the local vipers for their venom. Though there was no proof that he used poison, something had to be done, at least in show, about the Lord's death. As a temporary exile, though no one called it that, Oberyn was sent to Old Town and then Lys, and Prince Quentin, Doran's son, was sent to Ironwood to get rid of any bad blood caused by Oberyn's actions. The prince's legend would only grow darker from there. Many knew of his battles, duels, horses, tourneys, and love life. Oberyn quickly became known as an exceptional fighter that was renowned for his skill and speed with sword and spear. He studied at the Citadel, where he had the fortune to see the Citadel's copy of Lives of Four Kings and forging six links in his maester's chain before he just grew bored of it and decided, you know, Essos is where he can have the most fun. Oberyn used his time traveling the free cities to learn the poisoner's trade, and if the rumors are true, art's darker than that. He rode with the Second Sons for a time, soldiered in the disputed land across the oh, narrow really? sea, and then formed his own company. At one point, Oberyn would acquire a black stallion with a mane and tail the color of fire. He could be seen wearing a shirt armored with overlapping discs of bright copper, a pale red silk cloak, a steel round shield of the Dornish style decorated with the sigil of House Martell, and a visorless helm adorned with a copper sun when in battle. While fighting, it would be common to see him wield an ash spear, eight feet long, with a steel spearhead and spike, and wear supple leather, flowing silk, and light armor. For tourneys, we know he was on horse by Prince Rhaegar Targaryen and Sir Barristan Selmy at the tourney at Storm's End. He also attended the tourney of Harrenhal in 281 AC, where he danced with the Shara Dane. We also know Oberyn was responsible for refueling the feud between the Martells and the Tyrells. Tension would rise between the Dorne and the Reach again when Prince Oberyn crippled the heir to High Garden. At the tourney, Willis Tyrell, heir to High Garden, was made to compete by his father before he was really ready to do so. Though Oberyn hit Willis's breastplate clean, the heir's foot got caught, and as he fell, his horse came down on top of his leg. This crippled him. Oberyn sent for a maester afterwards, but it was all he could do to save the boy's leg. The knee was past mending. However, Willis held no ill will towards Oberyn, and the two sent letters to each other pretty regularly. Turned out they both shared an interest in fine horse flesh. Interestingly enough, Oberyn, over the years, would also develop some strong opinions about the Targaryen kings, believing that certain maesters were too kind to King Viserys II, who he claims did nothing once he got the throne. He also didn't really like Baylor the Blessed, who he understands why the vipers never bit. He asked Sansa, if you were a viper, my lady, would you want to bite a bloodless stick like Baylor the Blessed? Now let's briefly- Hey, Kevin O'Leary, AKA Mr. One <sighs> Shark Tank Damn here. Ads, if you're watching bro. this video, that means I'm on- ...touch on sex and his children. Though, not with his children. All the while Oberyn was having a good time, he would continue to have sex with both men and women, leaving bastard girls all over Dorne, obviously only when he slept with the women. These daughters were known as the Sand Snakes, and as far as it is known, he only ever fathered eight daughters. Oberyn was different than most other lords, as he took responsibility for his bastard children, seeking to raise them, teaching them how to defend themselves, and giving them independence in growing up. He told them, if you would wed, wed. If not, take your pleasure where you find it. There's little enough in this world. Choose well, though. If you saddle yourself with a fool or a brute, don't look to me to rid you of him. I gave you the tools to do that yourself. 
Oberon also looked out for his niece, Ariana Martell. When she, frustrated and wanting to marry, went to go meet the crippled heir of Highgarden Willis with Tien's help, Prince Oberon caught them at Vath and brought them back. Besides that, Oberon always had stories he would share with the children. Though some of these girls would be born after Robert's rebellion and obviously Ariana attempting to sneak away, I feel it is best to end on Robert's rebellion. When Robert's rebellion broke out in 282 AC, it isn't known where Oberon was. He could have been in Essos or in Dorne. While there was no evidence he could find, the whispers and gossip claim that Sir Gregor Clegane and Amori Lorch had killed Ilya and her children at the end of the rebellion. After hearing of Ilya and her children's brutal murder and the death of the Mad King, Oberyn attempted to raise an army to crown Viserys Targaryen, though in the current times of the books, no one really speaks of it. Ravens were set to fly, and riders rode with secret messages to begin the uprising. But the new hand, John Aaron, managed to travel to Sunspear with Prince Lewin's bones in the following year. He sat down with Prince Doran and kept the peace. Robert Baratheon never went to Doran afterwards, and Oberyn seldom left it. Despite this, Oberyn never let go what happened to his sister and her children, desiring revenge. He left Dorne, a rare act after Robert's Rebellion, when his brother Doran and Oberyn made a plan to end the reign of the Baratheons and destroy House Lannister. Oberyn supposedly traveled to Braavos, where Viserys and Daenerys were being taken care of by Willem Derry. There, Willem and Oberyn, along with the Sea Lord of Braavos as a witness, signed a secret marriage pact between Viserys and Ariana Martell in return for Doran's help in taking the Iron Throne one day. From then on, Oberyn would visit his brother in the Water Gardens twice a fortnight. When the books begin, Oberyn was still hungry for revenge for the death of his beloved sister. So that is Oberyn Martell before the books. Please like the video, subscribe, and come back for more videos. Yeah, I want to see another ad. So that, because I think one was enough. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. Learn about Oberyn before the books. Um, the biggest thing that really interested me about that, that whole thing was the fact that the whole thing about, um, uh, what's her name? The, was it his sister or his niece? Um, that they, they secretly got married to Viserys, which is, that's pretty interesting to know that they wanted to the Targaryens to be back on their throne because they wanted to destroy um, House Baratheon and, and and the Lannisters. They, I mean, we know he, he. I mean, from the show, from the show, we know that he hated the Lannisters. Like that wasn't, you know, anything outside of the scope of us not knowing we we knew how much because from he came on the scene i mean the first episode we saw a Oberyn in he displayed his hatred for the lannisters and we as it progressed we knew why the conversation he had with Tyrion, um also the conversation he had with with tywin you know we understood where he was coming from and why he hated them so much um um so Oberyn, the way how he got the name, and and his, his his legend is real. You know what I'm saying? His legend is is real. He was a great fighter, quick, wore light or armor, which is, um, which at least they got they 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 you know they displayed that, um, in the fight when he was fighting the mountain. You know he wore light armor because I remember I think it was Tyrion that asked him why aren't you wearing. Like, you know, don't you need a helmet or, you know what I'm saying? So that explains a lot. Um, the Red Viper, the way how he got the name is pretty cool too. Um, very deceiving, but, <laughs> you know, very deceiving and, and not very honest. Because um, it was a legitimate fight and he kind of like cheated. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to poison your ass. <laughs> I don't know, but, um, but it's pretty interesting though. It's pretty interesting. The Martells, I would love to know more about them because I would love to know more about them, not from the show, but definitely once I start reading the books, 
that's going to be a point of interest for me. Um, they're very interesting people because um, maybe the best representation of, you know, the world we live in today is Dorn. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like just the society over there um, is, is like the closest. I'm not going to say it's exact, but it's the closest. Just the way how you you guys have described this the society that they had there, meaning, you know, men and women are equal um, and stuff like that from the book's perspective. You know, a woman can sit on the throne. Uh, uh, you know, it's not just men, you know. So it's the closest thing to what we have today as in, you know, complete, I'm, I'm not going to say in the whole world, but, you know, in the United States, where it's, you know, women can do just as much as what men can do, um, even though, you know, they still have the, the, the problem of men getting more pay than women doing the same job, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. I don't know what that is all about. Um, I don't know why that is. It's doing the same job. If she's doing it just as well, why not pay her just the same? You know, it's just weird. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's it, every time I hear a story like that, it's just like, why? Like, why would they go to such lengths to to make a woman feel inferior? I I just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what does it cost you? Why? Because you want men to be. Listen, man. Without women in this world, what would we be? A bunch of freaking homosexual that's what it is so i mean i just don't understand why we don't appreciate women more i just i just don't get it like uh i don't want to go off and start talking about how i feel about women because then it's gonna make it feel like i'm feminist and all of this other stuff so i don't want to get into that because for me it's just like for me it's human beings it's not it's not one sex over the other or one, I, I mean, or one gender over the other. For me, it's human being. It's all love. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to treat anybody differently like, because they are. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's just, for me, it's just like, I'll support this, but understand my beliefs. You get what I'm saying? Because I do have my own beliefs. Um, I believe everybody um, has... Um, they get a chance to to live life just like I I do, and you deserve to do whatever. One of the greatest the greatest things that we have in life as human beings is the power of choice. If you choose choose to love whoever you want to love, you get what I'm saying. Doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that I uh, agree or I would want that for myself. You know, and to me, in a certain way, I, I do believe that you have certain segments of society now that are very, very, they're, they're, they're becoming bullies. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, believe or, or, you know what I'm saying? And it, it's like, do this or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you can't have a mind of your own. It's like, everything is just kind of pushed down on you to accept, even when in your bones of bones, you don't really want to accept it. But it's like, if I don't do this, I might lose this. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it's an invisible ultimatum that I that I hate about society today. You know, but it is what it is. And we all got to live. And I'll be damned if anybody's going to take away my power of choice. So everybody has choice and everybody needs to be individuals. And I dig that. I love that. Um, so I, I, I like that. George wrote that into the to the Dorn um, society, the Dorn, the country of Dorn, or that the kingdom of Dorn, I should say. I love that he wrote that in there. Whereas in men and women are able to acquire the same positions no matter what. It's not men are not always in succession of one after the other. The women get a chance to to rule also. So you can have a queen um, even if it you know even if they're even if the 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 fir even if they're first born, you get what I'm saying. So, I like that. So, thank you guys for watching once again, man. It's it's been an awesome ride. This Game of Thrones can't wait for April. Definitely, definitely, I'm gonna be on that. By that time, everything I have should be settled down. It's April we're talking about. It'll be the beginning, the, the whatever. Springtime, springtime, springtime. So, thank you guys for watching once again. Oberyn, pretty interesting character, man. Um, 
can't wait to read about him in the, in the books if you guys have a more extensive explanation of that on youtube or wherever you know you can send it to me i'll do it at a later time i'm leaving the bigger the longer videos for later because right now i'm so restricted for time i really cannot sit down and watch something that's like 40 minutes because i have so much other reactions that i want that i want to do like if it's something great i will definitely um try to to figure it out and try to find time to do it if it's like because this is lore so i can do them at any time like if it if it was something immediate that i need to know i would watch it but it's not really like with ippo i have to do those because the 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 subscribers on the channel are demanding me to do them so i'm doing them so and they're long because it's a continuation of the series these are just lures and histories and stuff like that i can do them at any time and it'll still get the same response so it's it's not that big a deal i just have to just keep doing game of thrones videos i don't mind doing 20 30 minutes but those one hour long videos no <laughs> not right now maybe later on maybe as we get we should be winding down on content by the time we get around the time for um for it to drop for season eight to drop so i'm not worried about it so thank you guys for watching once again man it's been awesome um unfortunately this is the only game of thrones video you guys are gonna get today or the only video i'm putting out today actually because i'm recording this whole day i just planned it out for just content for the week recording for the week so things will be happening i'm doing all my reactions today and then i don't have to worry about them for the week so whenever they come out for this week just watch them okay that's all it is i'm gonna do i'm i'm gonna try to do some other lore videos during the week as always and put them up but that's the only thing i'm going to be worried about for the week the rest of the stuff on the channel they have already been scheduled for the week so just look out for them okay so thank you guys for watching you already know who it is remember to subscribe leave a like and leave a comment you guys already know what it is it's your boy terabyte reacts in peace